But the only way, the only time I think I've ever been able to understand myself was on an acid trip. <laughs> The drug was administered in a drink of water given at the start of each day's exercise. Twenty-five minutes later, the first effects of the drug became apparent. The men began to relax and to giggle. But this man was more seriously affected and had to be removed from the exercise. After thirty-five minutes, one of the radio operators had become incapable of using his set, and the efficiency of the rocket launcher team was also very impaired. But one hour and ten minutes after taking the drug, with one man climbing a tree to feed the birds, the troop commander gave up, admitting that he could no longer control himself or his men. Now, is so far, are these visual things the only effects you find? No. What other effects? It's all to do with color. It's all to do with round, with shape. It's, uh, everything's color. Everything, you know, is... Oh, it must be to do with orange. Not only with orange, but, oh. I haven't seen color. I live in a monochromatic world. I first dropped acid when I was 18. I was over at these people's house one night. This guy I went to school with was over there and asked me if I wanted to try some acid. I had read about it in the newspapers and heard a few friends talk about it, so I was curious. I was pretty jacked up on marijuana, so I decided to try it, and I dropped it. I don't know what I was waiting for, a flash or, or a rush or whatever, but I kept sitting there waiting and waiting and nothing was happening. So we tripped down to Market Street and I decided to buy a hot dog. very hungry and I had put mustard and ketchup and relish in the usual and I put the hot dog up to my mouth and somebody started screaming I didn't know what was happening so I looked up at my friend Terry and said did you hear that didn't you hear someone scream he said no I got the hot dog up to my mouth again and I was ready to bite, and the scream got louder. And it hit me. No, it couldn't be. And I looked down at the hot dog, and there was a face on him. Eyes, nose, a mouth. I had put the ketchup to where it looked like his hair. And he started telling me that I couldn't eat him. That he had a wife and seven kids at home to support. And I stood there with this hot dog and asked Terry, do you know this hot dog is talking to me? And he says, nah, let's get out of here. He thought I was just faking. And I told him, look at the thing, he's got a face, and he's screaming. And the guy finally looked over and he got on the same trip that I was on. And we sat there carrying on a conversation with that hot dog. Finally, I decided I was just hallucinating, so I put it in my mouth and bit down. It screamed so loud that you could hear it all over town, so I had to throw it on the ground and step on it. And I was jumping on this hot dog in the middle of Market Street. is a glass of water, colorless, tasteless. It contains 100 gamma of LSD-25, one-tenth of a milligram, the equivalent of one-six-hundredth of a grain. An ounce of this material will make 150,000 such doses. Let us observe the effect some three hours later.
Mrs. Huntley. Well, I just couldn't. I couldn't possibly tell you. It's, it's here. Can't you feel it? This whole room, this, this, everything is in color, and, and I can feel the air. I can, I can see it. I can see all the molecules. I, I'm, I'm part of it. I, I'm, can't you see it? I'm trying. Oh, it's just like, like you're released or you're free or... I don't know how I can tell you. How do you feel inside? Inside? I don't have any inside. Is it all one? It, it would be all one if, if, if you weren't here, and if, 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 if nobody else, yes, everything is one. I, you have nothing to do with it. I am one with what I am. I can see everything in color. Everything, you have to see the air. You can't believe it. And... And the dimensions and all the, the prisms and the rays and, and everything coming down through you and, and moving. What does this all mean to you? I've never seen such infinite beauty in my life. It's like a, a curtain or a spider web. Or, Can you see it? It's right here in front of me, right now. Watch. No. Good heavens. You know what went through me? It passed right through me. If you look right over there, Are you looking? Can you? Yes. What should I see? I wish I could talk in Technicolor, or or let you see. Can you? Did you say you can see it? No, I can't quite see it. Tell me about it. It's. I can't tell you about it. If you can't see it, then you'll just never know it. I feel sorry for you. The word hallucination is defined as an apparent perception, as by sight or hearing, for which there is no real or external cause. You don't, I don't usually see something that's an actual real thing that I could describe as, you know. Sometimes, one time I saw a uh, a lot of faces, just all these faces appeared in front of me. And they were um, children's faces and oriental faces and old faces and uh, just all kinds of different faces in front of me. And uh, one time I looked in the mirror and I saw just my face just went through all these changes of uh, different uh, emotions and ages and uh, you know, I could feel all of the things that I saw. From the very beginnings of unrecorded time, men have reached for substances in the world around them that would alter, extend, and materially change their perception of reality. The reasons? Loneliness and fear. Boredom and a desire for the new and the unknown. Exploration and experimentation. The reasons, as varied and as many as the grains of sand on a beach. I started taking it in 1965 because uh, I was curious about it. I had several friends who had taken it, and uh, they told me that they had, you know, very good experiences with it, and I was just curious. Well, I was curious what I read and what I've heard, and. Uh, if it, could, if it could help, 
I was looking for, I was just looking for something. Uh, sort of because I had heard it makes you not only closer with yourself, but with everybody, this sort of love, peace type thing. And uh, I really wanted to find out if this was true. It was a kick. It was a thrill. You know, I, when I first started taking it, it was to explore myself. Well, I found I could only go so far before I, I just ran dead up against myself and I couldn't go any farther. And then after that, I just started taking it for kicks, you know, just to do something. Some have used these drugs to journey into the uncharted tunnels of the mind in search of medical and scientific truth. Others look behind the curtain just for kicks. Whatever the reason, the fact of the matter is the use of these drugs is on the rise, and it would seem valuable and interesting to inquire into cause and effect. The group use of the hallucinogens at parties is becoming a familiar part of the scene. An atmosphere is created, and mass use of the drug becomes the central factor in the lives of many young men and women. The problem is that while the drug is not physically addicting, there is considerable evidence that it can cause psychological dependence. So let's count the cost and take a good look at the results. I uh, remember once it was, it wasn't using um, LSD, it was peyote, which is reasonably similar. And I was in bed, and I was in bed with a young lady, and I turned and I looked at her face, and her face distorted into sort of a flesh-dripping monster face. You know, the features became drawn and like jowls hung and she grew fangs. And I quickly turned my head away and I told myself this couldn't be so. And for about an hour I wouldn't look at her face again. It was really frightening. I could see all around me no matter which way I was facing. It was just real frightening. I went into this survival land, and um, I was afraid everyone was going to go there, and that things were never going to be the same, and that everyone was going to become real vicious and hateful, and just climb on top of each other to get what they wanted. And I never thought the world was going to be any different than that. everything vibrates I can I look at uh, chairs and they I can see the waves in them and it's, it's pulsating it's vibrating and this I, I can everything turns into vibrations it's like everything is falling apart my eyes are an electronic microscope and I can see uh, all the just all the atoms and everything everything pulsates took the acid around 2 in the morning and uh, started reading this book. And there are sections in it that um, give instructions to a person who is dead. And uh, they tell him to do certain things and hang on to certain things and let go of other certain things, letting, just l allowing the experience to happen to you naturally. And in the course of that, I got very confused as to whether I was alive or whether I was dead. I mean, it was really very, very far out to just not know whether I was alive or dead. So if I'm dead, what is, what is happening? What's been happening with my life if I've been dead all this time? You know, what, what is the truth behind all of this? Uh, we bring them in on one Monday and they spend one week of uh, getting acquainted, having all the tests and examinations done to keep them busy for the whole week, day and night, practically. The second Monday, we give them a small dose of LSD in the five-man ward together. Uh, this is to help the group uh, pull together. 
and in their group experience during its 26 days to also get some good from this. Then the third Monday, we give them a larger dose individually and have each one of them uh, cared for by one of these teams who have associated with them and they give them their complete support. And this is where we aim for the so-called psychedelic experience. We've seen some kids that have had uh, prolonged psychosis. Some have had to go to state hospitals. Uh, some have been treated for two or three months and have been able to leave UCLA. Uh, some of them have had severe depressions. Some have been very confused. And some of the groovy hallucinations and the colors that they wanted, they couldn't stop. They got tired of it after 12 or 18 hours, but they couldn't stop the colors. Do they extend the range of the human mind? Or do they simply offer an easy escape from the demands of this world and time? I get up and um, make love and uh, play the guitar and uh, eat, go down to the beach and go swimming and, uh, and occasionally write some things when I feel like writing and um, think about how I'm going to get a little more money to not starve to death. and. Uh, it gets you out of that whole intellectual academic framework that you've been taught to be in all the years that you've gone to school. Not, not only emotional hang-ups, but social hang-ups don't do this and don't do that and you shouldn't associate with these people and this and that. The things that more you might say that I were brought up with. I just get, I get flashes of people seeing me and it's kind of a schizophrenic thing. I, in a way I want people to see me and sometimes I don't. I'd get up and I'd feel like someone had a rawhide band around my forehead and it was just such a pressure that by afternoon I'd be crying. So every morning I'd wake up with this pressure and every afternoon I'd cry. Do they make possible creative achievement and a more valid and intense perception? Or do they merely substitute an unreal fantasy world for the sometimes harsh facts of reality? Oh yes, I think that I experience things much more intensely now than, uh, I mean I've uh, hallucinated without having any drugs since I've taken LSD. Had very vivid light experiences. Sometimes I've I went into lights that are brighter than the sun, and I see patterns in in everything, in dirt, in trees. I hallucinated a fish that just came and swallowed the worm, and I said, to myself, Oh boy, this is it. This stuff is really as good as they say it is. Afraid of anything anymore which is, you know, has good points and it's bad points. I'm especially, you know, not afraid to die. Because we certainly think rebellion is a very healthy thing and we like rebellion. And we think great changes in society come out of rebellion. And we think uh, that we adults have kind of screwed things up. We haven't done a very good job in the adult world. With the, with the bomb hanging over us in Vietnam, with our crazy ideas about censorship, our crazy sexual attitudes, our abortion laws, we haven't done a very good job. However, I do think that Fooling with LSD is like Russian roulette. I don't think it's like uh, swallowing goldfish. I don't think it's spinning a hula hoop or crowding a lot of people into a telephone booth. Do that in two minutes, eternity in an hour. It's almost impossible, of course, as all the patients say to describe it. You can only say it isn't, it isn't, it isn't. Trying to tell people what it is. Well, of course, I don't know any of our friends said that have taken it, but haven't said this one thing in common. Well, I never knew anything like that in the whole of my life. And one or two people have said to me, I've said it to myself, that's what death is going to be like. And oh, what fun it will be. How do you mean that? Well, I mean that there are the colors and the beauties, the designs, the beautiful way things appear. People themselves, dull people that I thought dull, appear fascinating, interesting, mysterious, wonderful. But that's only the beginning. Men were saying it this afternoon who was taking it. Suddenly you notice that there aren't these separations, that we're not on a separate island shouting across to somebody else and trying to hear what they're saying and misunderstanding them. You know, you use the word yourself, empathy. This thing's flowing underneath. We're parts of a single continent. It meets underneath the water. 
and with that goes such delight the sober certainty of waking bliss.